Hello everyone and welcome to Felix's Base Time. In today's video, I have an interview with Christina Cook, the Artemis II mission specialist. She's also the first woman to be assigned to a lunar mission. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Thank you so, so much um, for coming on here for an interview and um, congratulations as being picked um, as one of the crew members for Artemis II. Um, I know you haven't got a while, so we'll jump right into my first question. Um, the public only found out um, yesterday that that you were the the crew for Artemis II. Um, but when did you find out, and what was what was your reaction at first? The crew found out about a month or so ago, and it was a great story because we were all told to come to a meeting, unbeknownst to each other, that the rest of us were also going to be sent to the same meeting. Each of us had a different pretext for that meeting that made it look like it wasn't as important of a magnitude as it ended up being. And as luck would have it, or bad luck, many of us were late for different reasons. So we were late to our own assignment meeting. And of course, when we walked into the room and we saw who was present, we realized something bigger than what we thought was about to happen. I was asked by the chief of the flight operations directorate uh, if I would like to go fly on Artemis II. And of course, a question like that leaves you speechless. But when it, I did eventually answer the question, I said it would be a privilege. And that's exactly what it is and what it feels like. It's a privilege to be a part of this mission. It's a excitement that this mission is happening at all. The fact that we get to contribute in this way is just absolutely phenomenal. I would be excited to contribute in any way. I would be excited to cheerlead anyone who was assigned to this mission. And um, we're just all ready to jump in and to see where it goes. Amazing. Um, the Artemis II uh, mission will be around, I think about 10 days long. Um, have, you had any, ha have you had any time to connect with your crew members? Um, kind of presumably during training and, and in the past? Absolutely. We all know each other really well from the past through different ways. Victor Glover is a classmate of mine in my astronaut class. So I've known him for many, many years very closely. I consider him one of my dearest friends. Reed Wiseman, I worked with him in a leadership role in the astronaut office. And he's someone that really conveys a sense that he believes in you. And I think that's important in a commander. Jeremy Hansen, what an incredible leader, thought leader in expeditionary behavior feedback and things that really are, are crystallized in the astronaut core as some of our most important values. He brings that to the table and they're all just super people. I've I've enjoyed my time working with all of them and it's been really exciting in the last month to get each other, get to know each other as crewmates and to to share this knowledge together. Amazing. Um for for the Artemis missions, um, presumably there, there's going to be lots of lots of training involved. I'm guessing you've already started this training, and what has this involved? And do you know what other training you'll be doing over the next few months leading up to your mission? Sure. Interestingly, the training flow is about about a year and a half long. And so it's slated to start around June. We haven't done any training yet. One of those, if we had started training, people might have might have known, but that wasn't something that was public for a while. But what we have been doing and what we've been doing for years is contributing to the missions as crew members, providing insight as to what might work or not work as well in microgravity, being a part of test campaigns on everything about the Orion vehicle that you can imagine from how the toilet's going to work to how stowage is going to work to how egress in a suit in microgravity is going to work how the hatch works these are all things i've literally participated in over the last couple of years so we we know the vehicle we know some of the engineers and we're excited to jump into the real technical training on all the systems on the mission design itself to meet the people that have been working on this for a lot longer than we have and that'll really ramp up in june up until then i think we'll be forming some relationships sharing the awesome news about Artemis 2 and getting to know our future teammates. Wonderful. Um, we have a question here from, from the Everything Artemis News account. Wants to know, um, how has the Artemis training or how will the Artemis training differ from training for other space flights? Well, right now, the big comparison point that I have is comparing it to ISS, International Space Station Training, which I had the chance to do in most of 2018. And that's going to be very different. Uh, one of the ways it's different is we're not training for 
or as many things. When you go to ISS, you have to do literally everything an astronaut would possibly need to do. You have to be able to do spacewalks. You have to operate the robotic arm. You know, you have to do a lot of different types of science. On Orion, I think we're going to be more focused on the systems, the life support systems that are on board the mission, how we can provide the most useful feedback as a result of knowing those systems to the ground teams. So the training will differ in its technical aspects in that way. But I think the most important difference is that we're doing this for the first time. That means everything's gonna change as we move through this training flow. ISS, we had it figured out. 20 years of continuous human presence on board the ISS by the time I got there. That means we pretty much knew the game. We had a really efficient training flow. For this vehicle, I hope that we are working with the team throughout the training to tweak it, to change it, to make things better and better as we go and figure that out together. Wonderful. Um, here's my last question. Um, so you're going to be the first woman assigned to a lunar mission, which means you're going to be a great inspiration to, um, to so many people in the US and all around the world as well. Have you got any ideas on how um, you're going to help spread this inspiration throughout your mission? To me, the most inspirational aspect of it is that we've decided as an agency, as a country, as a world in many cases, that it's important to go for all and by all. That when we answer humanity's call to explore, we need to answer that with all of humanity. That's what we should be celebrating. That's the true inspirational message that I want to put out there. You know, we are in a time when we recognize that we are more successful if we take every contribution that's on the table from someone with talent. If we make sure that if you have got a dream, you have to work equally hard to achieve those dreams. That's how we're most successful. Well, that's the inspirational message that I hope to convey through this mission. Yes, I had heroes that came before me, and it is a true honor to pay homage to those trailblazers. And in doing that, I think the best way I can do that is to hopefully be an inspiration and a mentor to the future explorers that are coming up. Amazing. That's all the questions I've got for you today. Thank you so much um, for coming on here for an interview. Um, once again, congratulations on being picked um, for the Artemis crew. Thanks so much. Take care, Felix. Okay. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and sign up to my Patreon page. A link will be in the description. Bye.